The Republic of Trinidad and Tobago is the southernmost country in the Caribbean archipelago. Home to five species of marine turtles, all of which play important roles in their ecosystem, which is not limited to only local waters. These species are the leatherback, loggerhead, green, hawksbill, and olive ridley, all of which are designated protected status as environmentally sensitive species under the environmentally sensitive species notices of 2014 issued by the Trinidad and Tobago Environmental Management Authority. This protection is necessary as global populations of all these species face a significant level of extinction threat. If proper care is not taken, these species and the important ecological roles they fulfill may forever be lost. Under the environmentally sensitive species rules pertaining to marine turtles, these turtles and their eggs are protected. To summarize the limitations on use and prohibited activities prescribed by the Environmental Management Authority, the following are prohibited. Harvest, removal, injury, hunting, selling, or otherwise bringing about harm to live turtles or their eggs, deliberate or reckless capture or endangerment, use of any device or substance causing harm or negative impact, dumping, littering, or polluting, disturbance, destruction, or alteration of important habitat. Under the careful guidance and supervision of the authorities, the following activities are, however, permitted. Educational activities related to conservation and protection, scientific research under approved permits, and conservation management of species. Other applicable international legislation includes the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora, CITES, the SPOR Protocol, United Nations Convention on Biological Diversity, and the Cartagena Convention, all of which lay specific guidelines and best practice recommendations for managing valuable wildlife resources. Sea turtles are critical components of their ecosystems. As macro herbivores, they help maintain the health of reefs and seagrass beds through grazing, which helps support populations of fish and shrimp harvested by man. They feed on excess algae that could otherwise overgrow reefs and result in conversion to algae-dominated areas that are unable to support the same level of biodiversity. They also keep populations of jellyfish and other prey species in check and act as food sources for other natural predators. Trinidad and Tobago is home to several important nesting sites for these species especially the leatherback turtle, which has a nesting season from March to August. The main sites are Matura, Grand Rivier, and Fishing Pond in Trinidad, and Black Rock, Black Bay, Grafton, and Turtle Beach in Tobago. The major threats facing marine turtles globally and locally include climate change, which affects the temperature of beaches and therefore the sex ratios of developing turtles, hunting and poaching, marine pollution, and incidental bycatch from long lines and fishing nets. Locally, the major threats affecting turtles are illegal hunting and bycatch from gill nets, according to one of Trinidad and Tobago's leading NGOs in sea turtle conservation, Nature Seekers. Each year, hundreds or even thousands of turtles become entangled in marine debris, abandoned fishing gear, nets and lines set by fishermen, or fall victims to oil spills. These turtles suffer disfiguring injuries, illnesses, or drown as a result of these man-made threats. Turtles also mistake plastic bags for jellyfish, leading to a slow, tragic death. Bright lights from coastal developments also cause disorientation of adults and hatchlings, causing them to travel further inland instead of out to sea. Many hatchlings are run over by oncoming traffic or fall prey to predators such as dogs. The biggest the problem facing sea turtles today is bycatch. Um, bycatch is the, the number one challenge and what we are finding is that um, in the space of a short period of time within a couple of days, sometimes weeks, a large amount of turtles are killed in nets. Some fishermen will tell you that over the period of one year they would catch like almost 
100 turtles in their net. Mm -hmm. And when you multiply that by the number of fishermen on the coast, you can get a very significant number of mortality. In time now, you're allowed to kill turtles. However, changing of the law did not mitigate the issue of incidental bycatch. So that problem is still there. Once a fisherman puts a net out into the ocean, a turtle will be entangling it. Because of the number of turtles we have nesting on the beaches, during the peak pe period last year, as an example, 2014, we had almost 300 turtles nesting on Matura Beach. On Grand River Beach, it was probably about four, almost 500. The Sea Turtle Recovery Action Plan for Trinidad and Tobago is one of the main tools to address issues facing sea turtles. This plan provides a framework for sustainable management of turtle resources, from identifying critical habitats, developing specific management plans, control of specific threats, review of regulatory mechanisms and policies, compliance with local and international legislation, and monitoring of turtle populations. This plan also highlights the importance of public education and awareness for the success of any management plan. Local NGOs, clubs and government organizations play a vital role in managing turtle resources. These include Nature Seekers, Turtle Village Trust, SOS Tobago, the University of the West Indies Biological Society, Institute of Marine Affairs and Wildlife Section of the Forestry Division. These groups play vital roles in driving research and conservation initiatives, as well as coordinating beach cleanup exercises ahead of nesting season and throughout the year. Limitations of local management include law enforcement. Although laws exist to protect turtles, limited resources for enforcing these laws remain a problem. Conflict between fishing and turtle nesting season. The country's active fishing industry comprised 2,264 vessels in 2005 and provided 1.18% employment for the country, according to the FAO in 2006. Further research and policy development is needed in this regard to address this problem. Total exclusion devices can be included on trawl nets, but would have no impact on the harm caused by other commonly used types of nets. In order to reduce incidents of bycatch, reconsideration on the positioning of nets and long lines near a known nesting site or the checking of nets more often to detect and rescue entangled turtles are possible solutions. Further research is also needed on the extent of disease affecting nesting populations in Trinidad and Tobago. Monitoring for the fibropapilloma disease, which has been affecting turtles throughout the Caribbean, is important for early detection and treatment as it may cause blindness, starvation and mortality. Nesting and resident population data collection. Continuation and expansion of data collection on the local and visiting population numbers are needed. Quantitative surveying of turtle habitat extent and condition is needed to better understand which areas are important habitats which may require protection or rehabilitation. Finally, creation of a national database is needed for easy access and sharing of data. Irresponsible turtle watching practices by some members of the public also threaten the well-being of nesting turtles. Sitting or standing on turtles, use of bright lights and camera flashes can not only disrupt nesting but can cause injury and disorientation of turtles. Spending most of their lives in the water, the turtle's body mass is supported by the water. Their fragile skeletons may not be able to support the weight of persons sitting or standing on them, leading to fractures, internal injuries and even drowning of injured turtles. Responsible turtle watching is done under the guidance of authorised tour guides with a required permit to access nesting beaches. These permits can be obtained from the offices of the Forestry Division or via the tour guide. Permits are issued in order to prevent overcrowding of nesting sites that exceed the beaches carrying capacity for visitors. It is quiet observation of turtles at a safe distance, no use of bright lights and flash photography. Use of red light is recommended as it poses less of a disturbance to turtles and no use of ATVs or vehicles on beaches during nesting season to avoid crushing of nests. Our philosophy about turtle watching is that we must operate in a way that the turtle, the turtles doesn't know that we are there. So we have to be very discreet as possible. As a matter of fact, um, we have to make sure that the natural process is not interrupted at all. 
So the way in which you do that is um, firstly ensuring that every visitor that comes to Watch Turtle has a, has a guide. And in this context, the guide will ensure that um, and guide the, the turtle watching process. So you don't have to be well informed about how to watch turtles in order to be part of our program. Um, the guide will exercise some judgment in when and how to approach the turtle. In most cases, approaching is done from the back. Sometimes it can be done from the sides. Other times, if the turtle is in, a, is in a nesting process, you can approach from any direction. The turtle being in a trance um, will seldom respond to movement around. In most cases, that turtle is diverting all the attention and effort on laying the eggs and will not pay too much attention even to extra lights. That's why we allow photography, that's why we allow um, extra lights on the turtle during the stage of the nesting. Um, hardly ever the turtle will leave the nesting process and not complete it. And therefore, the camouflaging stage right after the nesting will commence once the turtle have nested the camouflaging stage will take place so we use a little more light so that people could see the turtle uh, we time this quite a lot and before the turtles go into the ocean we take all the light out allowing the turtle to to um, readjust to the to the night environment so that when she's ready to go she can actually leave without the distraction or disturbance of extra light. Through careful, sustainable management of both total resources, their role in the ecosystem, contribution to biodiversity and the economy will be more secure for the benefit of all. To find out more about marine turtles, turtle watching, or how you can get involved in turtle conservation, check out the links in the description box below.